I don't have a problem with that. Me personally, I definitely think that he was right on point with that. I know a lot of black people are going to be upset about that. And as I've and told you before. And are upset. Well, like I told you, when I, black give, Twitter went when I give a damn, I'll let you know. The fact of the matter is, is that we, as a nation of people, as a community, we make up 14% of the population in the United States of America. Mm -hmm. We are not even the dominant minority anymore. That's the Hispanic population in this country. We have to recognize that we are outnumbered. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, even though the system sometimes is unjust and sometimes is unfair, it doesn't accord us the license to be unfair as well. We have to make sure that if we're shining a light on issues, that we're just as fair-minded as we're asking other people to be towards us. All right, folks, uh, that, of course, is uh, Stephen A. Smith, and uh, he was on uh, Arsenio Hall show talking about remarks made by Kobe Bryant in a, uh, an interview done with uh, the New Yorker magazine and when Bryant was asked about his fellow All-Star LeBron James and the Miami Heat wearing hoodies uh, at one point uh, during the whole um, uh, Trayvon Martin uh, incident. Uh, this is what... Bryant said, I won't react to something just because I'm supposed to because I'm an African American. The argument doesn't make any sense to me. So we want to advance as a society and a culture, but say, if something happens to an African American, we immediately come to his defense, yet you want to talk about how far we've progressed as a society? Well, we've progressed as a society, then don't jump to somebody's defense just because they're African American. You sit and you listen to the facts just like you would in any other situation, right? So I won't assert myself. Well, he's caught a lot of, um, a lot of flack, and uh, let's see how our next guest handles him. Uh, David Swerdlick, columnist and contributing editor for The Root, of course, and a regular here on the Steve Malzberg Show. Hey, David. Hey, Steve. Thanks for having me. It's my pleasure. So what do you uh, have to say to Kobe? Well, I think that Kobe wants to be respected as an athlete, that he doesn't have to take a position on every issue that comes along, especially and in including issues where it involves a controversy that's, you know, generated a lot of heat and discussion in the African-American community. And I agree with him. But where I'm critical of Kobe is that he seems to be criticizing LeBron James and members of the Miami Heat and other black celebrities because they opted to get involved in the issue and to make a statement on the issue. If Kobe wants to be respected for staying out of the fray, that's fine. He's got to respect other people for wanting to get into the fray and make a statement. That's where I come down. Well, I, I, I mean, I don't know how, you know, well, he was uh, obviously saying what he would do. Um, I didn't know, I, I didn't, unless there's more to the statement that I haven't seen, I, don't, I didn't hear him say that the Heat were wrong in those, in those words, but he was implying that certainly. And, um, you know, and, and what's wrong with him saying that? I mean, well, here, was, here was a man who was eventually found to be not guilty. Uh, here was a very troubled, you know, I don't want to re, 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 uh, uh, you know, no, uh, rebattle no. the case. But here was, you know, it's, it's interesting. His parents haven't uh, filed a civil suit, and they never will. Uh, because uh, then everything comes out about their son, uh, probably things that, uh, that uh, Marco Mara knows that they don't want the world to know. So my point is, it was a reaction. It was a reaction where Jesse Jackson called him Emmett Till, which to me was disgusting. So, I mean, what's wrong if he's criticizing those who jumped to a conclusion, really, based on race? No, and, no, and I, see, I, we disagree on this, Steve, I think, and I, and I clearly... All right, I think we, uh, we lost David. We're going to try very hard to get him back. Um, and, uh, you know, again, I, I, have, I have no problem with, the, with, with, you know, what Kobe said. And Stephen A. Smith, for his own reason, I'm, I'm not sure that I, you know, it, I'm not sure that um, if I'm, if I'm African-American, and I could point to being Jewish, where we're even much, we're way, way less than uh, 11 or 14, whatever Smith said, blacks are of the population. So therefore, you have to watch what you say. In effect, um, I, I wouldn't take that into consideration in sticking up for someone who was also Jewish if I felt that that person was right. I think the issue here is the knee-jerk reaction, simply because the victim in this case, you know, the person who was killed in this case, was black to to ordinary to automatically assume that a wrong was done to him that the person who did it is guilty of some crime um based on what at that point when the heat did what they did it, it was very early on so I, I i don't have a problem with what uh with what kobe said to be uh, very uh, honest with you 
And I, you know, if, he, if it's viewed as a critique or a criticism of the Heat and LeBron uh, beyond just his own statement of what he feels and how he feels and what he would do and what he wouldn't do, then I don't have a problem with that either. Why should he not uh, be able to uh, express that criticism? I mean, this is something that, you know, again, the injustice that was done, in my mind, out of all of this, first of all, you never want to see a young man shot and killed for any reason. If it's self-defense on the part of the shooter, you know, it puts a different light on it. And the jury decided there was no a crime committed. They believed the self-defense story. Okay? So having said that, um, the fact of the matter is that um, you never like to see anybody, as I said, get hurt uh, at all. But to assume and, and to say this is the, the grave injustice that I think was a result from this, to equate this with Emmett Till, a, a young black, barely out of childhood, who was taken from his bed in the middle of the night by racists in the South, and, and tortured to death and wrapped in barbed wire and thrown into the bottom of the, the river because he spoke to a, a white woman. How you compare that as, as a black civil rights leader the way Jesse Jackson did and others? Jesse Jackson wasn't alone. How you compare that is, is beyond me. And that, I believe, was a grave, grave injustice. I also, uh, well, I don't know. Are we going to get him back? Can we get, all right, that's fine. David, we pick up with you on the phone. Go ahead. I was just saying uh, that, you know, I don't have a problem with Kobe uh, not only making his own point, but criticizing others who, who did jump to conclusions, which proved to be wrong. Uh, and as I said, Jesse Jackson and others even went so far as to, in my mind, demean what happened to people like Emmett Till. Yeah, no, Steve, and uh, 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 thanks for having me on again. I'm sorry that, that I lost connection on my end. Sorry. Um, to, to your point, um, the... the, the, the the thing with Kobe in this, the, the, the thing with Kobe at this point is that, uh, you know, he has, Kobe has essentially staked out a position on his side, and that's fine. But like you said, he has implied that, that LeBron James and others have jumped on a bandwagon in this case, and I just don't think that's the right way to characterize it. I don't think it's a bandwagon. It's LeBron James, the Miami Heat, other people, myself included, think that there was an injustice done in the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman case. We, reasonable minds can differ about whether the, the verdict was correct. The, you know, he was acquitted. We've moved on. So be it. I've written articles where I've said, hey, look, the verdict is the verdict. It's time to move on. But that's different than saying, I think an injustice was done in this case. But, but, but one do. of the things that he stressed, David, was to learn the facts. You think LeBron James in the Miami Heat followed that trial and saw the evidence and saw the arguments and watched the trial and saw the closing arguments and, and knew that there were minorities on that jury who also voted that way? Or did they just I, let emotion and color get into it? No, I, I do. I think they followed the facts. Oh, with, come on. Kobe Bryant. And, no, and, and Steve, again, I followed the facts pretty closely. Yeah, you. I, I, You're not I, an NBA I, player. And I, and I come down on the side of that, that even though if the jury found what they found, that's fine. But I don't, I, I don't think that the, the trial brought justice in this case because I do lay the blame for what happened on George Zimmerman. That's my that's Well, my that, well that's, what that's not what the courts found, and that's not what common sense dictates. Common sense dictates that this kid beat, was beating this guy to a pulp and banging his head and broke his nose, and he shot him in self-defense. But again, I mean, you know, so, so Kobe saying that the, they should learn the facts those are the facts. There's no denying that. That's what the witnesses' testimony showed, the police testimony, a Zimmerman testimony. I mean, there was no contrary evidence. Well, the facts that are not in dispute, Steve, and I know we have limited time. You got like 30 are seconds. That, are, are that George Zimmerman followed Trayvon Martin down the street and that Trayvon Martin is dead. So those facts are not in <laughs> That's, that's those pretty loose facts. with the facts, David, with all due respect. But after he was attacked, he defended himself. My well, gosh, the only... and the 911 operator told him to follow him and even testified on the stand that by asking where is he now, where is he now, one could assume he was asking him to follow him. Hey, we'll continue this at a later time. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Uh, David Swerdlick, a columnist contributing editor for The Root. Always interesting and exciting to talk to David on the Steve Malsberg Show on Newsmax Television.